Hi, this is Dr. Will Wheat again, and we're going to continue on with our discussion of repentance. In previous videos, we also indicated that how I preached prior, that I actually insinuated that God was bloodthirsty, and His bloodthirst was satisfied by Jesus Christ, and that we, the sinner, who was born sinners, all men were born sinners, had to be extremely sorrowful and repentant, meaning very sorrowful before God would forgive us, and that we would have to accept Jesus as our Lord from a very, uh, I use the word, contrite and sorrowful heart. That is scripture. But we, over, we, over, we overrode that scripture with the implication that you have to be completely sorry and very sorrowful. And one time in one service, uh, I'm ashamed to admit this, but someone came up to the altar saying that they wanted to receive Jesus. And I actually said to that person that you are not sorry enough, that you haven't repented deeply enough for Jesus to accept and to accept them and to forgive them of their sins. What an error. And I really regret that I ever did anything like that. But I was brainwashed in, into believing that before I came into this wonderful revelation that God is love and that God is at peace with us and that He's not angry with us. In a very subtle way, traditional teaching on repentance actually promoted the idea that our repentance leads God to goodness, that something we do persuades God to forgive. It is the exact opposite of what Romans chapter 2 verse 4 declares. That, chap, that verse in scripture reads, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? The goodness of God leads us to change our mind? I hadn't heard that before, though it was in the Bible. He has always been and always will be good. He took the initiative to do exceedingly more than what we deserve. He forgave humanity while they were dead in their trespasses and their sins. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, it reads, If one died for all, then all died. He is the last Adam the last of that race of humanity that stood guilty and condemned before God. We don't stand guilty and condemned before God because Jesus was the last Adam. There's a new or second Adam. He is the, the new or the last Adam. So, so now you don't have to wonder. He is the beginning of the new creation. Now, I want you to understand this. If one died, then all died. If one died for all, then all died. His resurrection began a new creation, a creation that stands blameless and innocent before their maker. That's wonderful news. For the gospel, in, I'm sorry, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The Romans chapter 1 verse 17 reads, For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. The good news does not proclaim the possibility of righteousness. It reveals and unveils righteousness. The good news is a declaration of God's faith, which awakens our faith. That's what the good news is, and that's what the good news does. Jesus is Lord. Now, since the birth of Christ, the kingdom of darkness has tried to overshadow the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It tried to murder Christians. It tried to dis uh, dissuade the, the gospel message. In all its efforts through history, the message of Christ and what he has accomplished for humanity has not been dissuaded or snuffed out. And the faith has grown even stronger. We have tried to malign the gospel with movies and books, but the gospel of Christ lives on, for Jesus is Lord. And every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So I'm here to encourage you. The price has been paid for your redemption. Be reconciled to God. Let your friends know that God loves them, and challenge them not to live on a, in a defensive mode, but to live and abide in his love and recognize the blessings and the mercies of God. 
Well, this is Dr. Will Wheat reminding you that God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week's Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. NCCFC.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC, NCCFC